How do you focus your attention? Today, I'd like to offer you an attention training practice. Now, why would we do an attention training practice? Well, I think it's pretty clear to most of us that there are a lot of things out in the world that are trying to hijack our attention on the regular. There's social media, there's the news, there's consumerism and advertising. There are a lot of things that really profit from holding our attention. But I like to have some agency in where my attention goes. And so there are lots of practices that I do in order to train that attention. And I'd like to offer you one today. And one of the reasons that I do attention training is sometimes I need a really narrow focus. And sometimes this is referred to a spotlight focus, right? And sometimes I need a more diffuse, open, more lantern kind of focus. And this depends on the task at hand. This tends to be based around like what goals that I have. But I do like to have build some awareness around where I'm putting my attention and why. So this is one of the ways that I do that. I would like you to also think for yourself why you practice training your attention. And hopefully this is helpful for you. So go ahead and get comfortable. For me, that usually means being seated on the edge of a chair. That's the Taoist in me. That's how a lot of our meditations are trained. Um, you can also be cross-legged if you want or standing, whatever feels good for you. Eyes can be opened or closed. Start to take some deeper breaths in and out through the nose. Feel the pull of gravity on your body. Stack your skeleton so it's in alignment with gravity. So if you're standing, letting your spine hang like a string of pearls from the ceiling. If you're seated, have your feet on the floor, head over shoulders, shoulders over ribs, ribs over hips, so that you have some ease and structure in your body. And again, you get to figure out what that means for you. You can do it laying down. And now I want you to focus, spotlight focus, on a point inside your body. Doesn't matter where. As we say in the studio, dancer's choice. You get to choose. Next, I want you to focus your attention somewhere outside your body. So still narrow focus, but now it's in the room somewhere instead of inside yourself. Now shift your focus back inside your body. And again, outside your body. All right, how did you do that? How did you move your attention from inside to outside? Now that may seem a little elusive, but it's really helpful to know how we shift our attention so that we can actually make it a choice when we wanna turn our attention from one thing to something else. For me, shifting my attention has a sense of movement to it. There's almost this whooshing sensation as I move from inside my body to outside or outside to inside. There's definitely some piece of movement to it. I like it. It's almost like I can see or feel a wind or a slipstream. What are the felt senses you notice in your body? Is there movement? Is there temperature? Is there pressure? And if you don't know the answer right now, that's okay, but stay curious about it. Do this exercise a few more times over the next few days and see if more information arises. Okay, so that's more of a narrow focus and noticing how we shift from focusing on one thing to focusing on something else. Now, what about more of that lantern spotlight, or that lantern diffuse focus versus the spotlight, excuse me. Okay, so go ahead and focus your eyes on something in front of you, narrow focus. And now let your gaze switch to a peripheral focus. So it's like you're looking out of the sides of your eyes. And as you're looking out of the sides of your eyes, I want to notice what happens to your body. For me, it feels like there's more spaciousness in my back, more space between the scapula, maybe more openness in the chest. I feel a sense of relaxation. I'm more in my back body. We tend to be really forward because a lot of our senses are in the front, nose is in the front, mouth is in the front, eyes are in the front, we hold our devices in the front. So there tends to be this up and forward focus. And when I slide into peripheral focus, I notice I go a little bit more back and down. 
Notice what happens for you and you can shift back and forth. So focus on something specific again with your eyes. And then shift back to peripheral. And one state isn't better than the other. We need both, right? We need to sometimes be able to be really focused, singular in our focus, really on our task. And sometimes we need this broader consciousness, this wider view, this view from the mountaintop, this wider lens. But being able to choose what's most appropriate for the context is how we do attention training, is how we build awareness, is how we build choice in the moment. I hope that was helpful for you. Take care.